Blog Talk Radio. Stay off the internet 
just so I can watch it on DVR later or maybe not DVR per se. Some of these fights, right? Some of them are just sitting on the archive waiting for me. So um, we'll definitely talk about this weekend. Some other topics out there. Well, we'll talk a little bit about the Tyson Fury rematch. There is rumors about the Wilder Fury rematch. Some people say, oh, there's no way it'll happen. It's too quick of a turnaround. Fury's still dealing with the cut. Um, but there's also pretty strong rumors about the undercard, which is pretty good news. Um, Mikey Garcia is in the news, potentially, anyway. There is uh, some sources out there. <laughs> um, Eddie Hearn. Going to play a little Eddie Hearn audio, him talking about the media and how he doesn't have a problem paying for coverage in, you know, forget about integrity. Not that there's a lot of integrity in in media in general, but, um, well, I mean, for him to say something about, well, I paid for Dan Raphael's room, like, it's just kind of like, wow, dude, like, okay, um, damn. And, and just some of the items that he covered, it, it's pretty like i mean eddie says a lot that's why we like him as far as uh just listening to his interviews he definitely pulls the curtain sometimes he tries to pull the curtain you know over our face over our eyes like many promoters have in the past right and still do to this day um but also he pulls us behind the curtain he pulls it up so we can take a look see of what's really going on and he's you know for a promoter or he's fairly honest and sometimes it's like dude why, why even say that you know what i mean you don't have to say that you know but uh yeah we're definitely going to get into all the good stuff but if this is your first time listening to the uh rope it up radio podcast it streams live on blogtalkradio.com forward slash rope a dope radio um it streams live at archives it's basically the headquarters however you can find the rope it up radio podcast across a lot of platforms Apple Podcast for one, if you could rate and review the show there, it really helps. I'm trying to start to do that. Uh, Player FM, Stitcher, Spricker, we're also part of the Grueling True Sports Podcast Network, which can be found everywhere, including iHeartRadio. You can uh, use Siri or Alexa for Spotify or tune in and find both shows there. You can also head on over to GruelingTruth.net. They got a great sponsor over there, BetNow.e. EU, promo code TGT, as in the grueling truth. Head on over to the website. It's boxing, it's football, basketball, baseball, everything in between. And real quick, if you're thinking about cutting the cable, or maybe you already have and you're not happy, you just need something, I got that something for you. AT&T TV Now. It's cable streaming, okay? They do have the free seven-day free trial, but the plans you know, start as low as $50 a month. And you get a nice package for that. HBO is included at the moment. There's no annual contract. You don't got to sign your life away. You can stream it anywhere. They have the cloud DVR as well, which comes in handy. AT&T TV now. I use it myself. I'm not just filling your head, filling your head full of shit. Like I couldn't even say that part right. So I guess I am kind of filling your head full of shit. Just kidding. But anyway, man, oh my I mean, golly, that was interesting, to say the least. And like I said, I have had some comments of, hey, when are you going to do your boxing Twitter segment? I've talked about it a couple times. Well, I've been kind of just throwing it in there. I'm not necessarily going to be like, all right, time to do that. Maybe on slow weeks, just the funniest stuff I've seen on boxing Twitter. I've, I've already kind of been doing that all these couple, you know, last chunk of years anyway, but I just wanted to kind of, put it even further into the show and almost like a segment, just like last week I did deliver some lines from Twitter, but yeah, boxing Twitter, like I mentioned after this fight, Oh man. I mean, it, it, it just never fails to either sometimes shock you either make you go, okay, I'm getting off this thing for a couple hours or just make you laugh. Just straight up laugh. Like, wow, dude. Okay, man. <laughs> like, sure, buddy. You know, that type of thing. But, um, you know, for every time now, you know, I remember, I talked about this last week too. I do remember, you know, back the last 10 years, let's say, of, of pay per views. You know, I do remember when there'd be 
just a shit pay-per-view or a pay-per-view, you know, a lot of folks aren't getting behind for obvious reasons, right? It's not a good pay-per-view. You know, I listed a variety of them last week. And I, I literally just judge pay-per-views off of what they've been giving us the last 10 years. And that's how I do it. I think it's a good system. And uh, you don't want to have to buy, buy all pay-per-views. I also mentioned to the fans that you can spend your money however you want. I'm not going to be one of these people that tell you this is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. But also, I just have, you know, we look at the main event. Is it two solid dudes at the weight class going at it? Yep, check. You know, um, look at the undercard, that type of thing. So I just don't remember time and time again, every single pay-per-view getting this much negative press from the media, the part-time media, and then the fans as well. And, and adding up how much these pay-per-views cost throughout the year, that's cool. But, you know, it's funny. Like I said, the majority of people in this country can watch it in a theater. Now, the people on the outskirts or in small states, I feel for you. I apologize. Of course, there's <laughs> – streams all over the place and a lot of people the, the 50 people that are complaining on twitter a lot of them are streaming anyway and if you're one of those folks boxing folks who in the last 10 years have bought maybe five to ten pay-per-views or you just have banished pay-per-view altogether for the last five years or something i respect that because you're consistent you're consistent but it's the other people that you know i mean like i said if it's a legit pay-per-view why are you complaining every time there's a pay-per-view? That's all I'm saying. Pacquiao Thurman with a with a solid undercard. Spence Porter with a damp like one of the best undercards we've seen in the last ten years. And then this one did you know as well too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the fight though. I mean, like I said, Ortiz was in great shape. Period. There's no obviously there's no debating that part. But um, he came out and was just countering. He, you know, he was on the outside. He was countering. You could tell that Wilder didn't want to really, like, all the way go with his jab, believe in his jab so much that he was going to get countered. He also didn't want to just wing right hands like he was against Fury, right? He knew that that left-hand counter was coming. And I thought Ortiz – Use good distance, right? He was active with his jab somewhat. I shouldn't say active, but he was pretty good with the jab. Whereas Wilder, as the fight wore on, he did start to land like harder, more effective jabs. But a lot of it was just poking and prodding and, you know, just kind of throwing it out there, whether it's, you know, seeing what he's doing. what You know, some of it was feints, of course. Some of it was trying to knock his gloves down. He started putting the left hook in, whether he was just throwing it or whether – it was kind of like a a sinker left hook, <laughs> like with a little curveball, like a curveball sinker. It came up high, but it would at times – and I do mean just at times – it would land. And he actually landed something pretty good there. Um, I don't think Ortiz was hurt like the broadcast said. Nowadays, you can't really listen to too many broadcasts and, you know, listen to them really well. It makes some good points from time to time, all these broadcast teams. But they're mostly like, like fanboys, you know, even more than in the past. But you could tell Wilder was like, well, I'm not just going to lunge with the right hand. And I'm not just going to – every time I throw my jab, sometimes he'd land it and then boom, another counter. And I did like the mini attacks from, from Ortiz as well. I thought that was a pretty good, uh, you know, when I beat my mini attacks as well, he'd land the counter and sometimes he'd get him near the rope and land to the body, land up to the head. And I thought Wilder, a, a chunk of times, did get up on the rope, but the other chunk of times he did actually pivot and get out of there. That's something we haven't been able to see. And he did keep that guard pretty well up there when he was by the ropes. Um, but you could tell somewhere in the fifth, especially the sixth, the right hand, he was finally starting to try to throw it. And uh, then they started to have some minor, and I do mean minor, exchanges. I mean, when I look at a heavyweight fight, I always kind of preference it. I always kind of put it in context to heavyweight fights, especially on the higher level in the last, whatever, five, ten years. You know, they're done, 
they're not necessarily the most action-packed. Maybe on, you know, on the top level against top level, you can have the Konoski and uh, and let's say Ariola, but I don't really look at that as top level versus top level just yet. Konoski, we'll see where he goes. He's got an interesting fight potentially coming up that I'll talk about a little later in the show, but it de- you know the first fight took a couple rounds to warm up then it was fun it was really fun but that was because wilder was trying to push it a little bit more this time not so much and so you're not going to see ortiz overextend himself too much and for the first time in a while wilder didn't overextend himself either um but he was losing rounds i mean there was a scorecard i believe that had it four to two and that's 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 like the minimum you can give uh, for Ortiz of a scorecard. Basically, like the max you can give is Wilder two rounds. That's the max. I'd be okay with like 4-1-1 one, one because you could probably say a round like, uh, not much happened there, you know, that type of thing. 5-1 um, to one I'm good with. I did think Wilder won a round. Um, but, yeah, I, I uh, the really the opening round, the opening rounds, the – there was like two flesh left hooks, or just straight left hands, I think they were actually. It, that kind of did it, you know. Both of them kind of landed really minor shots, a few decent shots, but a lot of jabs. And and it took a while for Wilder to actually land hit a straight jab that land, that found a home, you know what I mean? So I could see maybe 1-1 one, one after 2, but, you know, that measured pace lasted quite a while. And... um like, for instance, the fourth round, literally the difference in the round was just a few left hands, but they landed flush. That's the thing about this fight in general, but especially Ortiz. Sure, he didn't throw a bunch of punches, didn't land a bunch of punches, but pretty much every punch he landed or threw, he landed. And the ones that landed, you were like, oh, yeah, okay, damn. You know what I mean? Um I really even think in the fifth round, that was close. That was close. You did see Wilder kind of early and late in that round land something. But midway, it, it seemed like the Ortiz flush shots were the one. You know what I mean? Um, I, maybe the sixth round, the jab, and then he brought that left hook. Maybe that was the round that he landed that left hook. You could give that one to Wilder. So, like I said, after six, though, he's definitely cleanly winning this fight. And a lot of people that thought he was completely washed, like I said, you know, on boxing Twitter, they just couldn't admit it. They couldn't admit they were wrong that he was completely washed. Now, last week, I talked about how great shape he is. I talked about how he didn't take a lot of punishment over his career. But I also talked about the fact that age can sneak up on you. And it's not sneaking up on us with Ortiz, right? Because he's old as hell, right? Um, and also, who knows what those big shots and the knockdowns, you know, look like, uh, or not look like, but uh, from the first fight, a, a, what, a year and a half ago, something like that, maybe that did take enough out of him in an age, and, and maybe he, will, he was washed. So it's basically, you know, when I break down a fight or even a, a pay-per-view event and break down what's on the card, I just kind of throw a lot of stuff on the wall, and we'll see what sticks. I could see why people thought it would be um, a, a, a quicker fight. I mean, it was a quicker fight. It was a quicker knockout, but it played out differently, a, a fair amount differently, right? Because Wilder was losing the, what, the first four rounds. He was down on the card in the first one. Then he got the knockdown. Six round in between, you know, back and forth. And then he got hurt again. And, and that's why I think both these guys were at that measured pace because – well, shit, Ortiz had been knocked out by him. He felt his power. And, then, and also, Wilder almost got knocked out. So, to me, I, I, did, I don't know why people were calling this like a worthless, don't need it, nobody asked for it, this is a shit fight. You know, and, and I think some of that has to do with them wanting to see the Fury fight, um, which I get. Some of them... Um, don't like Wilder. Some of them, I mean, all these PBC pay-per-views, especially the last three, have been just getting destroyed. And then you're, you know, come, you know, after the fight, it's like, well, 
compared to the pay-per-views that have been given the last 10 years, these last three have been good. Now, you know, the, the Spence Garcia undercard was garbage. It was all one-sided mismatches. And the main event had an attraction because you had two pound-for-pound pound guys, but I could understand people that thought Mikey was just going to be out of his league at 147 at the top level. And sure as shit, he was. <laughs> you know, he was. So I understand why people – even the Pacquiao Broner, that undercard I really liked, had a really good undercard, but the Pacquiao Broner, you know, the main event, to me, that's just – it is what it is. I understand why it's on pay-per-view, but – it's not a match that I'm like, oh, dude, I'm pumped for. You know what I mean? It, it's it's just kind of a mixture of all this stuff. Uh, but you can tell, you know, you can really tell who was just hating, you know, and, and, and who wasn't after the fight. No matter what you, you think about his style, it is what it is. Um, and even in the seventh round, and, and actually, like I said, in the sixth, and then in the seventh round, you start to see – Wow, they really start to throw his right hand more. You know what I mean? And he was getting caught. In fact, right before the knockout, he got caught with some really good shots. There was a good exchange. Uh, both of them landed, you know, clean shots. And it was, I think the second half took, you know, I think that's where it would have started stepping up. And, and you could tell, obviously, Wilder was going to go for it because, you know, I think every round that went by where he wasn't going to win, I think he would have just continued to step it up. Um but, man, that right hand, it's just that minor moment. You know, he he almost covered up enough to block it. That's something Ortiz does well, too. But if you look at the replay, he did have – he was his guard – he was near the rope, and his guard wasn't all the way up. And he had just made a miss. And it was like – but it's over. It's just a split second. It's over. And when he hit, it, it was one of those things that it doesn't get called this much anymore – but the walking concussion, they call it. So it's not a full-on I'm out for four straight seconds. It's just for that split second you're out, you're frozen, and it's technically some sort of concussion. You know what I mean? Let's put it this way. Ortiz would be in the protocol, the concussion protocol if this was football, that type of thing. You know, it just shook him. It just shook him up, and he didn't beat the count. He still had his gloves when he was – you know, the way he got – even the way he got up to bring himself – and by the way, Ortiz just getting up from that, even close to the count, is something special, right? But the way he, first of all, barely could get his chest off the ground, then managed to do that, rolled over, and then slowly got up and used his arms and everything, his whole might just to get up, you could tell he was out of it. Plus, I believe his gloves were still on the ground at that – it's nine and then boom, you know, it, it's, he was out. He was out. Now, some people say, well, he, Wilder would have finished him. Well, the round would have been over if you think about it. Cause when he hit him around the seven second mark round would have been over, but honestly he was out of it. And it was not a full on, like I said, concussion, because you could see within five, 10, 20 minutes, he was okay. And, and thankfully so, but I was good with the, the knockout. I, he was done. It, it was just not – to me, he wasn't ready to fight, and that's what you got to show. Just because you walk to your corner doesn't mean you're ready to fight. So I was good with the stoppage. Um, it, was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was interesting, to say the least. Um, usually the fights can be in five theaters or three theaters or two theaters. It really kind of matters what fight it is and what time of year. Um, so there's only two th theaters available this time, but the one I normally go to, it's usually from like two to three I go to, but this one's the most I go to. It's probably 15 minutes from my house. And it was, it was packed. It was packed. It was fun in there. And, and like I said, the heavyweight division, just getting that, that height, that talk, you know what I mean? Um, but overall, like, I didn't look at this as a shit mismatch. You know, another thing about Wilder fights, for the people that said this is a worthless fight, we don't need it, it never should have been made, it's a complete bullshit mismatch, it's going to be over real quick. I just never understood that. Like I said, I could see the points of it ending quicker. I could see the points of age. I could see the points of wear and tear. I did think people went overboard with his last two performances. 
And I gave the example of when he signed with Matchroom in those two performances. When he has to go hunt somebody down, he's not as good. In the middle of the ring, at distance, and when a guy comes to him, that's where Ortiz is damn good. He looked damn good. He looked damn good. That's something you can't say. And I really hope that he gets a bigger fight. I really do. Um, but Wilder has gotten outboxed by Spilka, by Washington, or teased the first chunk of the fight and almost stopped. Like, we've seen this time and time again. I just don't understand that. Why was this a shitty fight if Wilder can get outboxed in it? And that's exactly what happened. He was getting countered cleanly time and time again. So it's it just that's what you can tell Wilder's starting to get a little bit bigger name because you're starting to get all these just over the top statements. You know what I mean? And um, it's just it's just funny, dude. It, it's just funny. And, and after the fight, you know. I, this is just boxing Twitter for you. As a Wilder hater, and at least he admits it, this is my take for the week. His power is overstated. It is more speed and similar to, hey, okay, that's cool. Um, who could hurt lumber and slowly relax, guys. I don't know if it's a slow relax. I also believe Wilder would struggle at cruiserweight and wouldn't make either of the WBSS cruiserweight tourneys we had. Does that mean he wouldn't make the finals? I'm not sure what, what, what exactly that is, but um, I guess that guy thinks, you know, whatever. Um, here's this uh, – actually, Asian boxing has been getting a lot of heat. I hear what he's saying. Um, so, anyway – but but also, you're like, come on, dude. So, anyway, loses a few rounds to a future Hall of Famer. It should have had the 11th round TKO, but he's exposed. Wilder loses six rounds, and he didn't lose all six rounds, but whatever. And it had a man he already stopped – and it looks like a big win, and it puts him in the all-time great conversation? That's the part I didn't get. Nobody put him in the all-time great. All-time great puncher, sure, but not all-time great. And those that did that, when you say them, those are just fanboys that they're putting him in the all-time great. Now, I understand the title defenses. You know, I'm going to handle this one just like I did with the GGG, okay? Um, come on. Like, the Golovkin, everybody hates the WBA, or these folks that love GGG to the point they're fanboys, talking about he's up there with Hagler. They hate the WBA unless it's a title run with the WBA involved with Golovkin. So his title run wasn't legit like that, and not compared to the time, the people in the past. It's same with Wilder. He has 10, that's great. He's been staying active as, as much as possible. He's had some injuries that hasn't kept him active, you know, or whatever. But I don't really care about those. Those are for fanboys and, and casuals, to be honest with you. It's just really – I understand why the broadcasts do it. Oh, Muhammad Ali, 10. Oh, wow, oh, oh, wow he's tied. And, oh, you know, that shit matters to casuals. Um, now here's uh, – Wilder's going to get mauled by fear. This is what he said right after the bat. Not sure Wilder at his best can survive the kind of toe-to-toe slugfest to the death that Fury has in store for him. Once the bell rings, Fury's going to sprint out to Wilder and unleash the beast and drop him. Well, we know that's just straight fanboy talk. I mean, come on, guys. Like, <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Now this other dude, this is this guy's a big time. I mean, this is like, wow, dude, are you serious? You're not serious when you say this. This is what I love about boxing Twitter. Um... Ortiz won every round only to lose to Wilder as a result of the fact that he's old and not tactically sound. He's not tactically sound, even though he's a counter puncher. Goddamn Wilder fucking sucks. I'm sure he'll get the one punch KO, but what a joke of a heavyweight. That's what was said, like, you know, a couple rounds before uh, the, the knockout, if you look at the timing now that I look at it. Um, and then... What the hell? Do you, the people were saying this was the most dreadful fight they've ever seen in their life. I mean, was it, it was, so it was that bad? <laughs> I mean, was it a brawl? Fuck no. Was it awesome? No. But it did have the tension because of the knockout, and he was down on the cards, meaning it was competitive. These are people that just said it was competitive. Basically, like, 
this dude said it's it's torture. That was torture. And the knockout's basically a death. So big deal. He knocked out some dude he already knocked out, and this guy's old and shitty. And this is the second t- uh, tweet. For KOs, I'll watch a highlight reel on YouTube. I watch boxing for, you know, boxing, because I guess Ortiz wasn't doing that. And if a world champion awkwardly drops seven rounds doing nothing before knocking out a zillion old fossil, forgive me if I'm not jumping out of my pants in excitement. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Boxing Twitter for you, dude. Like, like I get it. And then here's this is this is what really got me here. I don't think I can I can say this loud enough. The pay per view portion of the of the Wilder Ortiz card is fucking garbage. So Figueroa Seha was a garbage fight. Um, your friends, family should take you down to Shakedown Street and give you a, a swift ass whooping if you're paying for this garbage. Stop supporting garbage pay per views and they'll go away, right? So he talked about the undercard first and foremost, right? And then not long after, in my opinion, when the undercard started to turn out to be good, in my opinion, the undercard should never be the reason for buying a pay-per-view. But no one asked or wanted to see this rematch. In today's landscape, I will only entertain paying for crossover unification fights. And he says, honestly, we shouldn't have to pay for those. But so it's only... Cross promotion ESPN Fox fights that he'll pay for. For that's it. Or uh, so basically, Fury Wilder Crawford. That's that's it. And it has to be cross promotion. So <laughs> it just okay, dude. So it has to be unification too. Was he saying all this shit for the last ten years? That's what I w- I would like to. You know what I mean? That's what I'd like to know. Anyway, a little boxing Twitter for you. <laughs> it's funny. Now, the Fury fight, they talk about the Fury fight like the contracts are signed. Right? That's, that's the way they talk about it. Um, you know, I, I think it will happen. I, I do. Now, some people think, well, that eye's not going to heal. Some people think, you know, the way Tyson Fury's been talking that he wants to go to the UFC, I, I doubt that. Um, I don't think they'll pay him as much as he'd get in this one anyway. Um, so I don't, I don't think that's the case. Some people say it just Fury's just not interested anymore. I don't think that's the case either. I think, I think the contracts are stated. They both need to win, and now it's on and pop. And that's what it's. I think this fight will happen. And you know, they still got to dot the eyes and cross the T's. I'm sure. You know what I mean? I'm sure that has something to do with it. Um, oh, shit. Someone sent me this. I forgot this one. This, uh, this is the, the one I was talking about. I didn't have the tweet in front of me. But this knockout is the is like death after long torture. You know it was coming eventually. It, you knew it was coming eventually, and it wasn't fun at all. You're just glad the crap is over. And on the other note, while they're still utterly shit. I love that because he's old and not tactically sound. <laughs> That's a good one. Thanks for sending that to me, by the way. But anyway, um, you know, I look for Fury to outbox him. Um, but can he not get, you know, hit with the big punch? You know, for the people that say he completely out – it was a master classmanship, right? Just a masterpiece of a fight. I don't think that. And I know, oh, people are going, oh, PBC, Wilder, oh, you're protecting the U.S., you know, no, 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 no. You know, when I see master, you know, boxer, right, just outclassing someone, you think of a Crawford, you think of, uh, at times, a Lomachenko, you think of, well, of course, you think of Money Mayweather and a guy like Roy Jones, right? That's what you think of, Pernell Whitaker. Right, that's what you think of. But just nowadays, Wilder in Lomachenko, and at times uh, even Ward, whatever. A ma- just a masterful performance. Now, don't get me wrong; he outboxed them. He outboxed them. He showed a ton of heart. There's times where he 
actually did show some aggressiveness too, which I really liked out of him and, and made sure, like even in the round in round nine, Fury got knocked down. He made sure he tried to win the rest of the round. You know what I mean? He fought wonderfully. But to say it was a complete – I just don't – I mean, when you're on the canvas once, okay, no big deal. Beyond that, if that was the only knockdown, then I'd say that was pretty close to, you know, just a master class, supreme master class domination of skills, right? That'd be pretty close to it. But anytime you're out for a second or two on the canvas, I'm sorry, guys, it's not a master class. I mean, have you seen Mayweather out for a couple seconds on, on the ground? We've seen Lomachenko get hit more at uh, 135. Okay, but have you seen him on the ground out? So that's all I'm saying. Before we run away with, oh, God, he didn't even win a round besides those two. I, I think he won a round, a round maybe, maybe four, but that's pushing it. Maybe four. Those two he obviously won, but I give him a third. The fourth, eh, it doesn't matter. I, I don't know. I don't think he did. But even if you gave him eight to four, still didn't win the fight. 116, 112 is eight to four, people. 114, 112, I think, is the is the maximum or the lowest score, I guess you could say. Um, the max you could give to Wilder and the minimum you, you have to give you know, at least you can, I, I don't see seven to five, and I damn sure don't see six six um, in that rematch. But you know, it'll be basically. You know, I, I think he'll open up a little bit early. Uh, Wilder, you know, both of them can fight a little better. I mean, Tyson could just not be on the canvas out, even if he takes a little knockdown. And Wilder, when he did jab, especially I thought to the stomach and throw more punches, he had some e- effectiveness. If he he literally was just winging right hands in that fight, so he can tighten up on some of that as well. Um, and also, when he does have him hurt, you know, if he could even fifty percent not go as wild, that would be that would be an improvement. You know what I mean? So um, I just think you know it. it uh, uh, I don't think it's going to be – I still think it's a, a competitive fight. I think both guys you know, can improve upon their performance, but it's not just Fury. It's not just Fury that can uh, improve because we know, like I said, if you watch the fight, Wilder actually – you know, Wilder in general, when he's actually throwing his jab and he's not worrying about counters, now Fury will counter him, but not nearly as good as Ortiz would. So – when he's not worried, he does throw his jab more. And if you look at his the amount of jabs he throws and lands and, and, and measure it up with some other boxers out there, it's actually better than you think. And I just think it I just I think it's for the one and two in the division, to be honest with you. I don't care if it's lineal or not or it's not a unification so it doesn't count. Right now, as this stuff turns out, I think this is for one and two. Now Ruiz and, you know, AJ got a fight. Jillian White, we got to see what the hell's going on with him. And, and that's another thing about this fight with this rematch. People were like, I can't believe, you know, we didn't ask for this. This is bullshit. Well, who is he supposed to fight? You know, even if he took the ESPN deals or the DAZN deal, he would be fighting Fury. He wanted to fight Fury in May. They pushed it back. Okay, we're getting it in February. I'm happy. Okay, fine. That's fine. And they pushed it back. Oh, well. We're getting it, though, probably. I mean, it hasn't been officially announced, but I think we're going to get it. He wasn't going to fight, you know, Joshua and Ruiz, because part of that deal was the first fight for that 40 mil was going to be this fall, right? That was the plan. Well, he can't get that fight. He couldn't get the AJ fight. The only way he can get the AJ fight is next year or Ruiz, whatever. Jillian White was in limbo. He's been in limbo since July 20th when he fought. He couldn't get that fight. So then what are you going to say? Right after Konoski was in that brawl, put him in there. That's a way better fight than Ortiz. You know, who who is he going to fight that's better than Ortiz in this fight? And Ortiz proved it. So I'm done with this. Sometimes you got to rant. Sometimes you got to do stuff. Sometimes you just got to shut the fuck up, too, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Um... 
there was, you know, some cards that popped off. Luis Neri, I mean, Jesus Christ. This guy has a lot of talent. He's an exciting fighter to watch, but the guy can't make weight. He's not disciplined. And I really wanted to see that Rodriguez fight. There, the only I, Like, on paper, that was going to be the best undercard fight. But we just didn't know if Rodriguez, well, first of all, <laughs> I guess you could say, we didn't know if, you know, Neri would actually weigh in, and he didn't properly. But, um, or make weight, not weigh in. He weighed in, just not on weight. Um, which, like I said, it's just like, dude, it's getting to become a disgrace now. Like, come on, dude. Um, but anyway, Rodriguez getting stopped by the monster anyway. That was my only, like, I, I want to make sure. I don't know. I'm not going to call this just a can't miss fight. And this is a good matchup because I'm still kind of wary of that. How is he going to respond after that knockout and going right from a knockout into another tough fight. Sometimes that can catch up to a fighter. So I was in between on that. And Seha, regardless where Seha was after that Rigado fight, we know he's got a lot of power. He's a clean puncher. And it was going to be a step up for Figueroa. And Bartholomew lost his fight. He got knocked out. I was fine with the knockout. He seemed fine with the knockout. I thought he you know, lost this. For, it was a rematch fight anyway. That's the one who snuck up. In there, Santa Cruz, you know, I'll give Miguel Flores a lot of credit. He fought a lot – he fought better than I than I thought he would. Um, Santa Cruz said he was really sick. I think that kind of showed at 130, 135, that area. We'll see if any of his power and pop carries. That's going to be interesting. All I know is I don't want to spend a lot of time on that fight. He clearly won. But it was an entertaining fight, especially for the casuals that aren't used to seeing that many punches thrown, right? I mean, they were they were throwing a ton of punches. So it had its entertainment value. But, you know, Leo, Mr. I need a big fight, Santa Cruz, needs to fight Gary Russell. And that would be perfect. And maybe that's what, you know, I'll go to 130, then we'll see if he's okay at 130. I, I don't know. Maybe it'll be better <laughs> For, for, for Santa Cruz at that weight. I don't know. But what I do know is now that Russell's been talking about he wants a big fight instead of fighting once a year, let's make that next. That way, if Russell beats him, he can actually get at that weight class a bigger name, thus be a bigger fight for an East Coast fight with Tank. And then also, Leo can kind of get some more steam going again that he had going you know, a year, year and a half ago by beating Russell. And then people will be like, all right, that Gervonta Davis is a little bit more legit or whatever. Because some people, I mean, it's a good ass fight. It's entertaining, whatever. But some people just think he's going to get, you know, outclassed at that division, uh, you know, especially with a, a sharp puncher like Tank. But anyway, as far as Seha and Figueroa, you know, the first couple of rounds, I had it up, uh, Figueroa up two to one. And it was it was fun from the start. These dudes were going in. I mean, this was a fun fight. I had it three three after uh, six very close competitive fights. You know, somewhere in the rounds four, five, six, Seha just destroying the body of Figueroa, flush left hooks, and then just combos. Like you know how you have the old school shoe shine, but but harder than shoe shine. And, you know, obviously less rapid and fast as a shoe shine like Sugar Ray Leonard, so to speak. But, I mean, he was just destroying that body. And, and I'll say Figueroa actually did pick up the pace late, and I was okay with the draw. I had it 66. I could see 6 to 5, 7 to 5 for Seha. I didn't see Figueroa win in the, win in the fight, though. Um, but, it, I mean, that was a good ass fight, dude. That was a good ass fight, and that was like a, a really solid undercard fight that we need in these type of events, so we get you know our money's worth. You know that that's really what it's all about. Um, not just on the main card, but something that the casuals can maybe go, oh wow, so I was entertained by not just that, you know, not, not just the main event waiting around for the main event, right? Um, so overall, I'm not going to complain about this card as a pay-per-view card. 
And like I said last week, the way I rate pay per view cards, excuse me, is the is the same way every time. You know, I look at are they top level fighters? What we've won out of pay per view is the top dudes against the top dudes, not Mayweather Guerrero, not Mayweather Berto, not Pacquiao Algeria or Pacquiao Rios, not uh, Canelo versus Liam Smith. You know that type of thing. And the media and fans have always done a good job of destroying pay-per-views that are worthy of destruction. And that's what gets me with all these media members now that every event now, no matter great, good, or whatever, I don't want to buy that pay-per-view, they destroy them regardless. I mean, people were putting out buyer beware for Pacquiao and Thurman. It was a 50-50 fight at Vegas. People were trying to act like Spence and Porter wasn't two top-level dudes at welterweight. Look at that undercard, and then tell me, top to bottom, all four fights on that undercard, name me all these better undercards for pay-per-view. Like I said, if you're a pay-per-view person, or not a pay-per-view person, if you're if you bought, say, five or ten pay-per-views over the last ten years, and you just pick and choose just the big fights, that's cool, man. No problem. If you don't buy pay-per-view anymore, it's been five, six, seven years, you stream them all, that's your prerogative. I'm not going to come on here and tell you how to spend your money. That's not what I'm going to do. That's not what I'm going to do. That's not what the show's for. That's not what media is for. Oh, don't do this. Don't do that. Media is there to say, hey, compared to other cards, this card sucks. I told you, the Garcia Spence main event, I had interest. I went to the theater. To me, it was worth 22 bucks. But the undercard was garbage. The Pacquiao Broner wasn't really anticipating it. Why? Broner at 47 is not all that good. He is not a top level 147. But I can't sit there and discredit that undercard. They they lined up some fights on that undercard. They probably knew that people are going to go, Broner, what the hell? But anyway, I mean, that, that's just what I go through. I go through the process every time. And that's why I bring up the movie theater. Hey. Don't want to drop 75 on this one, but don't want to stream it? Just go to the theater. It's 20 bucks, 25 bucks. That's all I'm saying. It's just funny. Like, I've never seen this amount of, you know, negativity for every pay-per-view, regardless of what they look like. You know, that that's that's where you can see it. And we've known through court filings that – there's a smear campaign going on on all ways. The PBC now have a, a certain amount, a certain range of uh, pay, you know, of uh, fanboys that at every corner protect the PBC now. That's something five years ago on Twitter you didn't have. But, you know, let's not forget the anti-PBC side had the real media. <laughs> but that's a little different. Every big event the tickets, no matter if it's a $5 million gate, a $2.5 million gate, when it comes to the tickets, they overprice this one. I could name you 10, 10 overpriced fights right now, especially in Vegas. And now in New York and L.A., you're starting to see this price gouge. It's not as bad as Vegas. This was a gouge. That's why they weren't looking to sell uh, 12 or 15,000 tickets. They just weren't. In fact, this whole event is like an investment. It really is for the next fight and to build. This, this is what Fox is building, and this is also what that PBC investment money is still getting put to. You know, so you know, it, I, I just I think it's funny, dude. Like I said last week, and I tweeted this too. How many top ranked cards have done a million dollar gate in the last several years? Take Pacquiao out of it now. And ask that same question. How many million gates has Lomachenko do? Fury was really close to one. He basically got it in his last one. Not in the first one, but the, this last one, he got a million-dollar gate in Vegas. Crawford's been close. You know, they don't do a mill in Nebraska, but they do a damn good gate. And he's done some really solid gates. See, when I look at a 750000 or 900000 or even just right up on that million-dollar gate, those are solid gates. 
chunk of years ago, people would say, hey, man, a $1.5 million gate, that's pretty solid. You know, when Golovkin was doing a million, million and a half, two million, he got up at the three uh, million range uh, with the Jacobs fight. When he was able to put, you know, butts in the seats, no matter if it's 16,000 or 10,000 or whatever, you know, this is where we're at in this landscape of boxing. Could they have sold 13,000 tickets? Yeah, but they sure wouldn't have made the same gate and... The only way this is like, what are you doing, is if they only did a $500,000 gate on this fight or something. Well, then you say, well, that was just plum dumb. But we'll see. I, all these gates, I just wait for the numbers to come out. There's no point in it. It's just, for the last couple of years, it's just been a nonstop from Steve Kim and all these dudes, Montero, all the time, every fight, every fight, you know, they were destroying the Spence. Porter. That did 2.5 million at the gate. They were destroying Fury Wilder. That did three and a half million at the gate. Like, these are solid numbers. Does it make him a superstar? Is he Floyd Mayweather? Is he Pacquiao? No. But who the fuck is? <laughs> you know, who the, that's like, even when they said the Canelo thing, you know, another thing about this whole Canelo thing, hey, you know, the, the Canelo... They only sold 10,000 tickets, but they still did an $8 million gate. Basically the same amount, really close to the same amount they just did in May with Jacobs. So it's not, they act like it's, oh my God, he only said 10,000. Yeah, I hear you. They gouged him, but they still made a gate though. Let, let's just calm down on that stuff. But the reason why it wasn't as good as gate, too, this, on both of them, well, you went back to back weeks in the same, or I mean, a two week gap between the, same venue, and Wilder had to get on the back end of Canelo. An $8 million gate, then two weeks later, you got to fight there. If they would have been mid-September and then in November, he was actually going to go in, in earlier in November, uh, was Wilder, but that's also why these tickets didn't sell as well. And the people that buy these tickets, the first wave, these are the casuals. These are the guys that this is worth it to them. This is what they, they got the money to blow. They got gamblers that come into town, high rollers. They, got, they, they just like to be at the event. Then, you know, leading up to fight week, guess what happens? The tickets drop. Happens every time. And the people that really go to these that are, you know, don't make a million a year or whatever, you know, 500000 a year, they uh, or don't want to spend that money even if they don't make that kind of money, they get the better deals. That's how it's gone. You know what I mean? And sure enough, and we buy late too. And sure enough, that Boone dude who destroyed it all week, you know, he, he said, oh, well, last 36 hours, the sales have picked up a little bit. Well, no shit. They brought the tickets down. And now the people that always know that, people go. I know people that go to Vegas all the time and don't buy tickets. They just wait. Sure. If they go to five fights a year, they'll get screwed on one of them. They'll be like, ah, oh, shit, you know. This one actually held up. And they didn't drop them as much. Okay, whatever, you know. It's just that's just how it goes. So, am I? Do I mention that they're gouging? Yeah, I do. But I don't just sit there and say that it's poor ticket sales. No, they're gouging for a reason. Look at uh, look at fucking um, Danny Garcia and Brandon Rios. That sold less than what Fury sold. Fury sold five thousand something in his last fight. It basically did a million dollar gate, right? Um. They did le I think it was less than six thousand. I can't remember the number if it's fifty eight hundred or fifty three. I don't know. I'm talking about Tyson Fury. I believe Danny Garcia, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I believe seeing the numbers, um, it was below that number, but they still did a million dollar gate. It's all about what you're trying to accomplish with that fight. That's all. And yeah, I do want them to lower the ticket price. But then the some of these same people are the ones that destroy. They're trying to create revenue to cut their losses a little bit. You know, it's kind of like back to that Brazil fight. People were destroying Showtime for, for the rumors of it being on pay-per-view. Then when they put it on basic Showtime, they destroyed them because they paid too much for the fight. You know what I mean? It just, it's just funny. It's just funny. But, hey, I want to move on. I want to move on. So, I don't have as much time. I got to remember that. I am going to work. Um, anyone want to jump in, press one. 
I do got a variety of items that I'm going to get to. I got a little Eddie Hearn audio talking about the media and how he has no problem paying for coverage. And the media itself should just forget about the code of integrity. Fuck it. Not that we have a lot of integrity anyway. Uh, Mikey Garcia's in the news as well. So there's a variety of items uh, that we'll get to. Also, the rumored bouts with the PBC and, uh, well, with the Wilder Fury. There's a theme with the PBC against top-ranked fighters that if they can get it going, I'm all on board, dude. I'm all on board with that. That's a great idea. If you're going to do a joint, if they're going to do a joint, you might as well joint the pay-per-view undercard, too. Um, Rene Alvarado, big win for him. <laughs> that was a big win. I didn't see that coming. You know, this a long time ago, probably, what, four or five years ago, um, he got knocked out. It was like 10th like round, 8th round, something like that. It was a TKO. Then he lost to Gamboa a couple of years after that. He had lost like five of his last 10 or something like that, six of his last 10, seven, I don't know. But he beat Canseo, dude, and that's pretty dope. That's pretty freaking dope. I didn't see that one coming. Kudos to Alvarado. That was big deal, dude. That that's that's a big deal for him. You know, we could talk about that WBA belt right now in that division or <laughs> most divisions, right? But either way, I look at the fights and if they're good or not, and that that I like that. You know what I mean? I do like that. And also, um, Zoo. Oh, what the hell is his name? Um, Zoo Khan. Oh, that Figueroa Seha combined. Almost 3,000 punches. 2,811, the second most in Super Bantamweight history. That's freaking ridiculous. And that uh, that Zoo Khan fight, too, dude. He broke the damn record at Featherweight. I think, yeah, at Featherweight. He threw 1,562. It's the sixth most punches thrown in CompuBox history at any weight class, for that matter. <laughs> any of the weight classes. So that that was pretty crazy too, um, and he you know he got the W and whatnot, um, and then one more fight that I do want to talk about. Like I said, I'm not able to really go all the way through as much as I normally would want, but you know what are you gonna do? Um, the Callum Smith, uh, John Ryder fight. This one was it was competitive. Now the scorecard, it's one of those scorecard robbers. The fight was competitive. I think it was competitive, but I understand when when you see nine to three and eight to four, you're going to hear robbery. That's just how it goes. Um, I'm not saying I agree with it, but we see it time and time again. There's a horrible, 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 horrible scorecard. Um, but like I said, was it just the highway robbery? He wasn't even in the fight. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. That's not that's not what took place there. Um but I did give Ryder the first uh couple of rounds, um, for sure. I gave him the first two. <laughs> he was landed. He's kinda like using his jab, landing a couple of nice shots, some hooks, um, and he was getting on the inside on the ropes. You know, he had this little quick jab and do some inside work while Smith was just when he was close to him, Callum Smith had problems. I did think that Callum finally got his long jab going, and he was landed a couple of couple of better shots than he went in the third. Smith got – both of them got cut. Smith got cut. Uh, I think it was the right eye, his right eye. It was in a decent spot, though, so it wouldn't leak in his eye. Fourth round was close, though. There was a couple of close rounds. This is the fifth round I gave to Smith. Two-way round, though. I just thought – um. And that's actually the round I think Ryder got cut in. Um, I just thought he closed better, just a tad better shots type deal. Gave him the six as well, jab and uh, movement. Started finally landing that right hand. So I had it about 3-3 after six. It was close, though. You know what I mean? There there was some close rounds in there. Um, Seventh round, I barely gave to Smith, but that was kind of up in the air. Ryder, though, I thought – there was an accidental headbutt in that one, too. I thought he closed it out better with some really nice hooks and some body shots. Once again, trapping Smith on the ropes in that eighth round. 
very close ninth round. Like I said, there's probably two or three swing rounds in this one. Um, I gave Ryder the, the – I think he closed stronger in the fight, though. The ninth – I'm sorry, the 10th, 11th, and 12th I gave to Ryder. Um, he was outworking him. He was just doing enough to win, and then he started roughing Callum up even more. Um, the last maybe 60, 75 seconds of the, the uh, 11th round was really good starting to be a fun fun fight busy round uh in general really the last chunk of rounds were a lot more entertaining um decent 12 round i I just thought um rider was busier i had it seven to five rider or six to six you know i'm I'm perfectly okay with six to six but i but i had it seven to five i had it seven to five for rider pretty cleanly uh well i shouldn't say cleanly so i just said six six up good with two I can't find seven rounds per se, though. For uh, I'm looking at my scorecard right now. I don't see seven rounds for uh, for Smith. Not that I just uh, thinking Ryder had seven easy rounds because, like I said, there's a couple swing rounds, so it was a competitive fight. But when you see two scorecards, one sixteen, one twelve, so eight to four, and one seventeen to one eleven, that's nine to three, nine rounds. I mean, eight rounds is ridiculous. I think eight rounds for either guy, I didn't see. Nine rounds for either guy is ridiculous, but especially on that side. So hence the, like I said, the robbery calls. That, that, a lot of that has to do with people calling out robberies uh, because of the actual scorecards, which it is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, but they, they, those are bad scorecards. I, I guess it was a mandatory you know, the the 117, 111 judge, um, Terry O'Connor is his name. Here's a couple other ones. Jo- Joseph Parker and Huey Fury. Boring fight, sure. Not a lot happened. He had that 10 to 2 for Parker. <laughs> Remember that Relic Burns fight that was a close, close fight? A lot of people thought Relic did enough to win. 116, 112 for Burns. <laughs> so, and actually, he screwed. This isn't the first time. He gave a healthy card against John Ryder. So, I mean, come on, dude. Come on. This is uh, – that was bad. That was bad. That was that was bad. In my humble opinion, that, those are bad-ass cards. Those are shitty cards. It's just something in boxing, especially obviously with the A side, that we just uh, – we just can't get over the hump. I don't know if we ever will, right? Um that's why I was kind of glad that Figueroa didn't get the benefit of the doubt and they actually called it a draw in that fight. You're always kind of worried at that point, right? You're like, I don't know if they're going to actually give it to him for this weekend. Like I said, it's not just this can't miss weekend, but some of these fights might turn out to be pretty damn good. Oscar Beladez uh, goes up to 130 in a junior lightweight eliminator for the WBC, but it's a 10 rounder. So that must not be a final eliminator. He's taking on just a tough veteran and uh, Andreas Gutierrez. Action fight, sure. It's a good testing ground for 130. Carl Frampton and Tyler McCrary. Um, I think it's a 10 rounder. Let me see, actually. Go to that page. I think it's it's 130. Frampton wants a big fight, but the way Frampton fights the levels, McCrary doesn't have that many great names on his. He has a couple of draws too. Frampton should take care of him, but Tyler McCrary, he may make it a competitive fight. And, and when Frampton's got other things on his mind, he does. It seemed like he peaked in that first fight. He's had good performances, no more great performances. The first fight with Frampton, excuse me. Um, and he had moments in the Warrington fight. He had moments in the rematch of Santa Cruz. But a lot of these fights that... Um, aren't on the top level. He underachieved. He fights to level, so you never know. Also, Teixeira and um, Adam, Adams. What is it? Uh, Adam Lopez, too. Uh, Carlos. How do, how do you say his name? He's actually, this is for a WBO uh, middleweight eliminator. 12-rounder. And uh, Arnold Barboza is uh, against William Silva. Uh, Barboza, junior prospect coming up. ESPN Plus has a card as well. There's a title fight. Tay-Tay and uh, 
Casimiro. I'm looking for that's actually the fight that I think could be really interesting this weekend. Uh, I see people talking about Bowen and, and, and uh, what, what the hell is his name? It's for uh, a British title or something like that. Um, also, uh, DeZone has a card. Best Putin against Budiev. That actually is one of those where you go, okay, Cecilia Brickhouse is also back. That one. So I mentioned the other one with Tete. This one, Best Putin and uh, Budiev. It's for the, the vacant. This is what I love about the WBA. And I'm obviously hating it, but I love it because it's so funny. Because it's so ridiculous, of course. All these belts are. Including if there's a PBC belt, by the way. Um, vacant. This is a vacant WBA regular welterweight title. Oh, boxing. You just never disappoint, but you're so disappointing. Never disappoint to entertain a fan that's used to it, I guess. That's, that's the way to say that. Oh, boy. But anyway, like I said, I don't get caught up in the belt. What's the matchup? And those are good match. That's a good matchup. I- I'm down for that matchup. I have no problem with that matchup. Those are good matchups. So, like I said, do they stand out like, oh, shit, Dawn and popping this weekend? No, no, that, that, that's not the case. But, um, you know, it might be a weekend that's a couple of these fights stand way out. And obviously that's what we're we're hoping. You know, that's what we always hope for on these type of weekends. And then, you know, I mean, we got some fights closing out pretty strong beyond that uh, the next couple of weeks. I mean, the last three weeks, the, the, the three weeks in December, man, in December, we've really closed <laughs> way harder than we, we've closed in the past, the last chunk of them. So that that's always fun. I mean, three straight weekends where it's just like, hell yeah, dude, sign me up. Um so yeah, that about that's kind of a light preview. I don't have a ton of time, so um, um, so it's, it's just one of those things. Don't have a grip of time. Not going to, uh, you know, uh, we'll have something to talk about on the back end, right? On the recap, um, we do have some news and notes out there. Um, I got a little Eddie Hearn audio to play, uh, which kind of is mind-boggling, but then again. You know, in this age of media in general, whether we're talking about politics, whether we're talking about um, anything, ESPN and, and other sports too. It's not just uh, boxing, as we know. But uh, he he said stuff, dude. That's just like, wow. He's just fully admitting it. Hey, at least he told the truth. Like I said, you can say what you want about Eddie Hearn. Um, whether you know, there's plenty of he's a, he's a freaking promoter. So there's plenty of, to say all about these promoters, every one of them. But he does – sometimes he puts out probably too much information <laughs> or his real feelings where you're like, oh, Eddie, that, that, you're going to get destroyed for that. Or he does, like I said, pull that curtain up to show you know, stuff that we don't normally get in other interviews. So um, – and, and, you know, the guy can talk. He's a damn promoter. He's done a damn pretty – you know, he's done a damn good job. Um, as a promoter, obviously, like I said, no matter what, you know, no matter what you say. So, um, but he's got, he had something to say that I do have to play. In fact, before we get to the news, I might as well, some other news anyway, I might as well just play the clip. Um, maybe I'll just kind of tune it up here. Let's see if I can, my switchboard's been acting up a little bit. I just refreshed it. If the people are on there right now, press one and it's not showing or whatever, if you, you know, text me if you know me, if you know the number, obviously. Or, you know, just try to press one again. Um, like I said, sometimes it's just, it's just kind of weird. Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? Let's see here, though. I'm going to try to tune this. Oh, 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 I'm going to try to tune this up here. Um, but I do have some news. You know what I mean? I definitely have some news out there. Okay, here we go. Oops. Okay, here we go. And he makes good points, too. I hear what he's saying sometimes, you know? I'm just going to move away from the card and touch on an article that came out yesterday on Fight Out um, about media, the zone, and the boxing media. I'm just going to get your reaction to you know, the last so long. 
I didn't really, I didn't really read it, but it's something like the zone are paying media travel. like travel and flights and all that sort of stuff to attend and cover events. I don't believe that is true. <laughs> it is so fucking what? I mean, and then they started having a go at me saying, oh, I pay for Kubin's rooms. Yeah, I do pay for Kubin's rooms. Do you know why? His numbers are fucking huge. And if your numbers are fucking huge and you've got good numbers, yeah. I'm not, not having a number. No, no, I know you're not. i do the same for you. Yeah. But I actually think we should pay more media to attend the event. I don't really see the issue with it because, I mean, a few of them are nodding their head over. Yeah, but, <laughs> so, but you're all coming to our event to cover our event, yeah. to give us exposure. Yeah. So it's okay for me to do an ad buy, like you know. So other you know other networks might do an ad buy yeah. with LA Times or New York Times. Yeah. So, so they pay them yeah. to cover the event. Yeah. But you're not allowed to pay for someone's hotel. Or I think it's really strange. And it's a bit salty. It might be fine. I mean, I think that Floyd probably looks half the time, right? Do you know what I mean? I mean, they, he's got unbelievable access for years and years. Did they, did they put him on his private jet a few times? Did they uh, pay for the hotels? I reckon so. But it's just very strange. I actually think that the promoter and the network should cover the costs of the media. That's how I think about it. They don't. But in some cases, they would. If there was a feature, for example, I think there was one recently with The Athletic, where the zone might say, we, you know, the athletic will say we're going to do a feature with you. It's like, no problem. You know, we'll fly you in, give you special access, do this. Yeah, the ad buys, you know, uh, he makes a good point about fight hype. Even though, you know, Ben didn't write this article, it's on his. The whole thing stems from an article. And, uh, well, I mean, we've been hearing about this. The first wave of the zone fights, there were plenty of people that got paid the, 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 whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, as far as traveling there and, and whatnot. I don't know anything else, what they got paid for. But as far as ad buys, that is that is that is different, I think, because as long as the piece isn't a complete puff piece, um, I get some of that. You know, uh you know, you, that that's that's different. That's a little different, but some of the items is like it gets a little more detailed and that's when I start to go, Well hey, hang on. Blah blah blah. I don't know, it's a bit of a weird one. Do you think that there is a fine line, though, between keeping integrity in the, in the media and journalism and, uh, and what you do? Not really. No? Not really. I mean, yeah, look, it's up. our job is to make the event as big as possible, to get as much exposure, to get as much publicity for the buyer. So we will do what we have to do to get that publicity. Good. Should a promoter worry about the journalistic integrity of a media member and not pay for their room? Absolutely fucking no way. You should a journalist talk to them. I mean, the boss might say, okay, we've got, look how many fights are in America right now, right? So you've got a situation, I've paid for, I don't know, I've paid for Sam Raphael's hotel yeah. in Dallas or wherever we were, I can't even remember. So what? The cover's free as can. It's a big deal to get him at my event. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to continue to do it. But that, that example is kind of interesting because you, you I think ESPN would want to cover that with Jose Ramirez there, um, but I'll just keep going on here. After that article, I'm going to do it even more so now. <laughs> I'm going to start inviting key media and paying for all their travel and uh, adjust. You can pay for my trip to Saudi if you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on, Saudi. <laughs> but I, I don't, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, no, I, I, I know you sort of have journalistic integrity. Like, yeah. You're covering an event that you might not be covering yeah. if you weren't getting your hotel room paid. Yeah. But I want you at my event to cover my event. So yeah. I've got to do what I've got to do to get you at my event. I don't say to Kubin, if you come to mine, I'll cover your hotel. I've just always done it. But, and, you know, quite I've had a bit of a hump that Kubin got this extra access. He does really good numbers, and that's been built over a long period of time with a lot of hard work. And again, Kubin's numbers were shit. You think so anyway, the interview kind of just keeps going. The integrity part kind of stood out to me. Where you're just like, well, hold on now. Like, like I said, the ad, ad buys in the LA Times, you say, hey, we'll buy some ad space. You advertise the fight. That's just advertising the fight on market. It's like buying commercial ads, you know, or for a podcast, you get a free month with the zone with this promo code or something like that. You know, that's, that's different. And I understand that. I understand what Eddie's saying in a lot of that. I really do. And, and I like how honest and open he is, but 
you know, the thing is, we see a lot of these media members going over the top. We talked about that, the, the complete, like, scripted thing that was out there for DAZN, pushing DAZN, and downing Wild Ortiz. Now, if you're just naturally doing that, that's cool. But a media member to sit there and say, don't buy Wild Ortiz, you should just do that. That's a waste of money. They're telling you how to spend your money, but yet they weren't telling you how to spend your money to, to this extent a chunk of years ago. They just weren't. They were not doing it. You didn't see media members or part-time media members that have access to bigger platforms, let's say, or do our guests on bigger podcasts, whatever the case may be. We didn't see that kind of talk. And we, I remember, you know, seeing this big wave of clip, like if you're paying these people and DAZN contacted me, I've always said that up front. It took me a while to say it because they didn't contact everyone, whatever, but they did contact me. They, they talked about their promotion budget and all that. And they said, we're just kind of getting feelers out there. We have interest, blah, blah, blah. And they, they throw a, bu- a money budget at you. Are you saying like over a year for me, or is that your budget for marketing or whatever? And then all of a sudden, like the next couple of months with their launch, you saw these complete shill tweets. <laughs> I mean, destroying the PBC and saying, hey, go to the zones where it's at. And this is when they didn't even have this is the first couple of months, but this is the first what? It took them till late April this year to have a hell of a schedule. And you look at the second quarter and the fourth quarter. They've had a bomb-ass schedule. All those people that were, and by the way, not just talking about PBC fanboys, there's plenty of people in the part-time media that were destroying the zone too and YouTube channels and all that. And now they're making up for it like, oh, no, it's the best. Forget it. It's like, well, you shouldn't have destroyed it either. They were just starting out. Let them have a little chance. Let them get a, you know, but they were saying this stuff, the zone's where it's at before they even had the schedule built, before we even knew what their schedule was. You know what I mean? So I, I, I'm in between on some of this. Some of this uh, I take a pretty, you know, hard stance. Like I said, though, I do appreciate Eddie's, you know, he did give some good examples um, uh, of what is okay. But once he starts talking about that integrity, which we know the media doesn't have in a, all walks of forms of media mostly, right? We know that. But as far as a sports fan, um goes you know but boxing wise you know i mean like i said it was proven in a court of law that there was a smear campaign and we we see it we see it and like i said really between the pbc fanboys and maybe they have some paid accounts out there too they just now catching up you know that that's that's what it is they're just now catching up to it um but it's still better to have the real media rather than the part-time media you'd rather have both and that's what they've had. Um, there is a couple other news items out there that I want to get to. <clears throat> oh, that that top rank. So on the, the, the Wilder Fury card, if we can get it announced here somewhat soon, um, which that's the rumors that it will be, there is some thoughts out there that they're going to do a PBC versus top rank card on the undercard. Lipinets against... Uh, that Aka, oh, I can't remember that guy's name. But I think he was up for the IBF. Both the WBC, IBF, both those guys are highly ranked. I think they're going to do some sort of interim to make it a mandatory for uh, Spence. I know Ugas is in the picture as well, potentially for a, uh, a uh, mandatory. Oh, Jake Donovan also, I forgot to mention this. Renee and Felix Alvara- Alvarado, 108. First set of twins argentina twins to win major titles it's just the fourth set of twins anywhere in the world to do so as well i forgot to mention that that tweet that he had like i said alvarez <laughs> alvarez that was awesome i can't believe, i i was surprised that he he did that but one of the cards is oh here we go kubrick pulev that's we we know he's in line for something right with the ibf and the wba stuff and all that adam konoski and P- uh, kubrick pulev are reportedly discussing a potential fight for the Wilder Fury card. 
to, to, to rematch. It's claimed that if Ruiz beats AJ, they believe they'll vacate his IBF, leaving these two top contenders to fight for it. So maybe that, you know, hinges on that. That's from The Athletic, by the way. I don't know. Um, and then, like I said, the Lipinets, and I just can't remember that guy's name, but he's up there in the rankings. So right now they're talking about two. God, even if we get one undercard or two undercard fights with that uh, pay-per-view theme to it with the top rank against PBC fighter. That'd be pretty cool. Um, Virgil Ortiz is actually going to face the veteran Brad Sullivan in a welterweight clash December 13th at Fantasy Springs in Indio, California. They're keeping him busy. He fought in, what, August? So that's a good way to end the year. Get him, uh, you know, some more experience. Um, And then I just saw this... um, not long ago, um, there's some rumors out there. We've talked about how Mikey Garcia could be a candidate to go to the zone. Kind of makes sense, especially if he wants to go to 140 or just a different platform. If he's not going to be at 147, it's kind of like, eh. But he may have a 147 fight on the zone with Jesse Vargas potentially. Um, this is uh, this comes out of uh, a Spanish. Uh, what? Where, where's this base? Oh, it's Best Putin? I thought Best Putin's fighting. I got a text from Wood. I thought Best Putin's fighting this weekend. Is Oh, so he has to come through that to get to that, to get to Abtukarov or whatever the hell his name was? That's the guy that I was thinking about. They're talking about, well, you know how this backroom deals can go, but that's they were talking about but that's that dude, not Boost Petten or Best Putin or whatever the fuck that dude's name is. But Best Putin's fighting this weekend. Okay, maybe that's what it's – that will be the matchup then. Maybe there's some backroom stuff going. Thanks for that, Woods. I appreciate that. Um, so, Mikey, there's this video out there. Um, or Lipinets. Okay, he is. Yep, okay. Yeah, so that that's, that's interesting because then you're like, okay, cool. You know, PBC top rank. It's for – Get you in the, a decent spot, you know, in the rankings and whatnot, or keeps your spot and elevates you, right? You can get maybe a mandatory or whatever. Um, Hearn says in a video, recent video, big news on our February card on the West Coast, not not L.A. or Vegas, okay. Garcia versus Vargas in Haney versus Fortuna in San Francisco. That's uh, uh, a rumor out there. Well, he said it. But, yeah, uh, so Jesse Vargas and Mikey Garcia, does that tell you that the Pacquiao, uh, <laughs> the Pacquiao Mayweather fight's happening? Because everybody kind of was just sold that it's, it's Mayweather and Pacquiao part two. Then. Since, you know, Floyd somehow, some way during Wilder fight week, um, what he does for Canelo as well and some others, um, Announce he's coming back. It's going to be one real boxer, which we assume Pacquiao, and an MMA fighter, which we assume um, is going to be. Uh, well, I guess we do, we can't assume anything. <laughs> we can't assume anything, right? I'm not going to assume anything. Who knows? Um, who's it, it's for sure going to be? But um, yeah, I don't really care on that part anyway. My assumption though that he go MMA boxer first then Pacquiao, but maybe he just wants to go right to Pacquiao. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, you know that WBO cruiserweight stuff with the World Boxing Super Series and Breedis and Glavosky, how that, you know, obviously there should be a rematch based off how that fight went down. There was some real shit going on. No matter what, if you think Glavosky's going to get knocked out in the next one, that's cool, but that was messed up what happened in that fight. Well, they're, they're going to have to not have that WB. The, the, it's, it's vacant. He put the Globoski, put the appeal in. So now Dordikos and Breedis is going to fight for the IBF and Globoski. And it sounds like Lawrence Okogli, uh will soon be ordered for that vacant belt. And I think that is right. Like I said, no matter how you actually think that that fight would end, if they had a rematch, I get I get you there. That makes sense. But he got screwed. And so if a fighter gets screwed no matter what, I think they should probably get their a good look there. They should be helped. Also, Greg, uh, Greg Conan 
sentenced a promoter, sen- sentenced – well, manager too, right? No, a promoter. Sentenced to six months in federal prison for fraud. He basically said, hey, um, this guy's doing that, and you're going to be okay, that type of thing. What was it, a manager? What, what was it again? So he was sentenced to six months in federal prison, three years uh, probation, 150 blah, blah, blah. Um, so it was fraud. It was wire fraud. Um, it was a, an investment in the amount of $200,000 and uh, had a guarantee return facilitated by a particular investment manager and had a guaranteed return. The victim was misled. The victim claimed he asked Conan for the uh, money plus the interest within 90 days after contacting the investment manager he had been referred to. The victim learned that the investment manager was not in the deal at all. They got to the bank records, yada, yada, yada. That's just some subtle news out there. Um, but what do you think about Garcia and Jesse Vargas? I really wanted to see Garcia at 40. Um, Vargas would have to – I mean, unless he's going to 54, I, I don't know. I mean, I know Vargas went up there real real quick. Vargas has been having problems. He was going to have that Munguia fight. And I thought, you know, considering – that, that who Munguia spot so far and where he's at, that's actually not, that wasn't that bad of a fight, but you know, that didn't happen. So, you know, what, what do you do after that? I, I don't know. I'm not crazy about the fight. Um, but at 147, is that a winnable fight? Jesse Vargas? That's a lot more winnable than Spence. <laughs> a lot of people thought a lot of people were up for Pacquiao and, and, and Garcia at 147. I was. Um, so Jesse Vargas. So if that's at 47, I don't mind that fight. I really like the Fortuna fight. You know, uh, um, the fact that Garcia has been working with Ta- or PBC for a while, they've, they've done right by him and vice versa, whatever. You know, for him to go over to the zone, that's cool. You know, um, and also – like I said, that that Haney and Fortuna fight, that's awesome. You got a DAZN fighter and a PBC fighter. So that's pretty dope. And I think that's a good step-up fight for him, too, Fortuna fight for Haney. I think that's a good quality opponent. I think that probably be his toughest opponent. So um, I'm, uh, I'm on board for that. Um, that about wraps it up. I'm going to save the quotes uh, for next week. Just uh, – and I mean quotes from uh, Anthony Joshua. Well, basically, I'm going to – there's a bunch of clips that I'm going to play or, or at least quote um, next week because, you know, that's when the actual fight is. And I don't have much time, <laughs> to be honest with you, left in the show today too. But he said some crazy shit, dude. He said, when I – went since everybody's saying Ruiz is the number one guy, who the hell is saying Ruiz is the number one guy, for one thing? I don't see that much. But he said, basically, when I, I'm going to destroy him, basically. I'm going to smoke him, you know? And when I'm done beating Ruiz, I want everybody to kiss my feet. Because I wouldn't have got credit for Ruiz. Now I want my due credit. Wow. That just sounds like certain things that say an Amir Khan would say or a Broner would say where you're like, what, dude? What are you talking about? Yeah, I try not to pick on fighters over the top just for clickbait, but there's times throughout that you you just got to be like, what are you talking about? You know, I mean, Deontay Wilder saying he's the most dangerous puster of all time. You know, I just, I don't, I don't, it's not, for 100% on me on that, just like his title defenses, the way they say, you know, some people are trying to build that up. It's really just stats for the casuals, in my opinion. It's still good that he's, you know, hit 10, 10 of them, uh, title defenses. It, some of this stuff doesn't matter. Some of it does. Like I said, I'm not trying to jump on these fighters for no reason. But what happens so – see, you never know how people are going to react until they lose or something starts swaying them the other way. You know, everything was Mr. Corporate America, Mr. GQ, Mr. I'm the guy, I'm the nice guy in boxing. 
The true colors come out. The true colors come out. Just like Mayweather, his true colors coming out right now, tweeting a comeback during Wilder fight. <laughs> That's some bullshit. Then he tried to make it up by, hey, go to the weigh-in, man. You know, like, oh, yeah, sure, Floyd. Yeah, you're not an attention whore, are you? <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Um, so, yeah, that one kind of like, huh. I don't know. I, I'm, 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 I'm on the fence about who's going to win. I'm favoring Ruiz by knockout. I just don't know if uh, – the biggest thing for me is obviously – can he hold up to a punch like that over and over again in general? And can he box on the outside the whole time? And if he doesn't, well, just being tired, the whole, you know, boxing on the outside, a lot of people want to say, oh, that's the pussy way to fight on the outside. It's tiring, though. <laughs> you can say whatever the hell you want. You can sit there and downgrade someone for boxing on the outside, moving a lot, whatever. Um, funny though, sometimes some of these same people didn't mind when Tyson Fury was doing that. Um, as long as you're landing hard shots, that's the clean shots. You can see that you're clearly separating yourself. You're winning the fight in my eyes, but, um, I don't know. I just, to be on the outside, you have to have pretty damn good defense too. He doesn't have good defense. So I, I, I'm leaning Ruiz by KO again, but I'm I'm still kind of stuck on the fence because I do think he can do some stuff at range. I do think he went for the knockout a little too like, oh, this is easy. I do think by the fifth round he had recovered, maybe not 100%. I don't think he was 100%, but he had recovered enough to win the fifth round. I gave him the fifth round because he was just boxing on the outside. But can he do that for the whole fight? I don't know. I really don't know. So um, 503 Portland. Um, if you want to jump in, this would be the time. If you're just listening, that's cool. If you want to jump in, this would be the time because we're, we're getting to that part of the show where we're, uh, you know, we're going to shut this puppy down. Um, so press one, text me, do whatever you got, uh, to do. And, uh, I'll let you, you know, close down the show per usual. If you're just listening, that's cool too. I understand. Thanks for listening. Everybody, thanks for listening. Who's going to listen to it later at night in the archive or, or who's listening live right now? Like I said, afternoon show. Had to just get it in type thing. You know what I mean? Um, as far as pay-per-view numbers, I actually just got to text pay-per-view numbers. Um, I, don't, I don't really know, man. I really don't know what they did. I do know that um, they plastered this thing all, all over the NFL and, and and all over the last month, you know, all over the place. And so even if this thing does lower pay-per-view numbers, um, this is like an investment, like I mentioned, for him in the, for the next fight and just in the future because his profile went up based off of the promo it got and then the highlight reel online. I, oh, I, I didn't like how they did the, you know, years ago, for a long time, HBO would show still shots. They'd show a little live shot and then a still shot. And even UFC on their big fights, some of the Conor McGregor fights, some of the highlight reel knockouts, when it came to their big fights, they'd show clips of someone getting kicked in the head or knocked out, um, you know, like with, with dudes that they're still trying to grow or whatever. But they wouldn't allow sometimes the McGregor knockout or certain things. Because Fox, well, you know, HBO did that for years, right? And HBO had that, uh, HBO basically had that, the replay on Saturday. So that's why they didn't want to give highlight clips away like that. Then they did a deal, I think, with Time Warner, or Time Warner did a deal with ESPN, because Time Warner and HBO connected, yada, yada, yada. Um, they did a deal where they finally show highlights, and it was like, finally, dude. Um, but the UFC did that with certain big events. And that always pissed me off. And I think they do it because they uh, they hold their pay-per-views available for 30 days with Fox when they were on Fox. And I didn't know that for the longest time. But then I remember renting a, a boxing pay-per-view, like going to the channel on normal cable and seeing that 
uh, uh, three weeks ago or whatever, uh, a UFC fight was still available to, to buy. And I thought, there must be something to it. <laughs> you know, I guess not showing the highlight makes people go, whether it's 10,000 people, 1,000 people, an extra 30,000, I don't know what it is, but there's got to be something to that that they think people are going to buy it. I don't know. What I do know is that the highlight was all over the place online. It definitely went viral that way. I would have liked to have seen it, though. I, I disagreed when HBO used to do this for years. I disagreed on the big events for UFC. And the PBC and Fox are doing it the same way. They've shown some of these, and some of them still. They showed a bunch of the Spence Porter fight. They've shown a bunch of – they showed the Wilder Brazil course. That was a Showtime fight. They showed that one. But um, they didn't show this one. Um, so I, I'm never a fan of that, but I, you know, it is what it is. HBO had their reasons. Fox has their reasons. I don't know. I just, you know, from a fan perspective, it's not a good enough reason for me, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring, okay. So Portland, like I said, I, I really don't have a lot of time, but I'm going to get you in and, 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 and you know, I, I do have to go to work though. We are down to like the last. That's why I did it during the afternoon. I tried to get out the Texas out there. We don't have a ton of time. Oh, oh, okay, okay. 503, I'm going to give you a chunk. And then Carcino, I'll give you a chunk too. But like I said, I don't have a lot of time because I do have to work. Portland, man, what's going on, man? How the hell are you doing? Yo, yo, what up, what up, Chris? Hell yeah, I'm doing good, brother. Thank you for getting me on. Yeah, I hear you, brother. I got to go to work later today and tonight too, so I'm chilling. But uh, yeah, let me do it real fast, man. What a... What a good, uh, you know, what a good main event uh, for this last pay-per-view card. Uh, Wilder, what a dangerous man that guy is. Uh, he could be losing on the scorecards, but you got to watch out. That if you leave your fucking chin open, that dude knows how to get you at the at the perfect moment and put you away. And damn, bro, Ortiz, I really thought this was going to go the distance for uh, Wilder, but damn, <laughs> Jesus, or. Dude, Wilder ain't no, ain't, dude, Wilder ain't no joke, bro. That dude, that dude with that right hand is, he'll stop any man. I mean, it's, it's incredible what that guy could do. That, that incredible power that he has is just insane, man. But, uh, but yeah, man, nothing, nothing but good, uh, nothing but a good report for, uh, for Deontay Wilder. I think he did excellent. He did what he, what he was supposed to do, put the man away, and now it's another highlight reel for his fucking, you know, another. Uh, Another KO for his highlight reel, so it's like it's dope, man. It's dope, and uh, but man, also let me get into it real quick. I'll make it real fast. But Leo Santa Cruz, I mean, I don't know what to say about you, man. It's, I, I I really didn't enjoy that fight. If Javante Davis or Gary Russell Jr. is next, I hope that's what it is, because this is the only way you could get the respect of the fans back. Because man, you're fucking shit in the bed, man. Especially for a pay per view card, you should have. I don't know, man. You you shit the bed, in my honest opinion. I mean, I, I'm Mexican. Leo Santa Cruz is my boy. But that fight was incredibly dull and painful to watch. But uh, but as far as that, yo yo, uh, you know we got Andy Ruiz next weekend. It's gonna be you know it's gonna be dope, man. Yo, as we we're saying, bro, this it's the year of the Mexicans, the year of the upset. So you know what it is, brother. And um, but also uh, yeah yeah. So uh, don't uh yeah yeah. Uh, so yeah, Deontay got you know got that got the got the win. He looked good. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Tyson Fury's next. That dude, bad boy, better get a WWE contract because he don't want to, he don't want none of that right hand. So you know that, that's that's all I gotta say about that. And as far as that man, yo Chris, have a good Thanksgiving, brother. You know it's, it's our American holiday, so you know let's enjoy, let's get let's eat, let's be merry, brother. Let's uh, let's have fun, brother. And uh, be uh, be a rope dope. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Have a good night at work. Happy Thanksgiving as well, Carcino from Chicago. Gonna bring you in right now. What's going on, Carcino? How the hell are you, buddy? Hey, what's up? I'm just chilling out here. I'm sitting here with Troy. Troy, you want to say what's up? Hi. <laughs> what's up? Yeah, hey. So we just sitting here. Yeah, we're watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Gavin for Life. <laughs> yeah, so I'm with them. Nice. I'm watching them right now. But yeah, I'll, I'll make All it right. quick. Uh, I'll <laughs> Yeah, it went just like the fight we thought it was going to go. It was going to be quicker. I picked five. If it really had went in five, I would have won a bunch of money. But I was uh, amazed at the game plan that uh, Ortiz had, which was exposing a lot. He was dedicating, for being a softball, he was dedicating that um, left hand shooting it under the elbow, going after the liver. 
of uh, Wilder, which I thought was a great strategy, and he wasn't throwing his shot straight, his left. He was looping it and was catching Wilder with some big shots. And I was impressed that Wilder was able to take those shots. He took them a lot better this time around than he did the first time. So, Yeah, Ortiz made every was, shot count, too, didn't he? Like, he didn't throw a bunch, oh, but yeah. when he landed, it was hard. So, yeah, I, I was sitting there, and I was like, man, he's really, uh, you know, he's taking them. But he did say he was ill the first fight, so maybe there's some validity to it. You know, we don't really know, but it is what it is. But I am I was impressed uh, with the knockout. You know, I mean, it just, I know it was going to happen again. You know, once somebody knocks you out, they know they can knock you out. <laughs> you know, it's just what it is. I, I, he wasn't able to continue. It, it was no sense of that fight continuing on. Yeah, he it was, was not going to do anything, you know. Yeah, so it was uh, the best they stopped it. But, yeah, just like the other call I just said right before that, I was not impressed with Leo Santa Cruz fight. Uh, it was fighting a guy who was basically – that fight was too soon for him to be fighting Leo. And it was just, you know, he's got to fight somebody. It's time. <laughs> I mean, his next fight better be somebody. You know, it's just time for that to happen. I 100% agree. Leo, Mr. Yeah. I need a big fight. Santa Cruz is what I'm calling him now, right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's no more, no more t- tune-up fights for him. This is it. So, yeah, man. So how do you That's see this series really like fight say. playing out? How do you see the rematch playing out? I think both of them can minorly approve, uh, improve on their performance, but is it just going to be like, hey, Fury's going to outbox him, and it'll be if Wilder lands it. I mean, is that what it basically comes down to, or do you think it's a little bit deeper? It's a little bit deeper. I mean, um, the thing is is that he's going to have to catch Tyson Fury, and he's going to catch him, I think, in the later round. Fury is great, but Fury, uh, he fatigues. He burns a lot of energy, sometimes unnecessarily. But I think this time he's going to really put the pressure on Wilder and try to put some combinations together and try to get him out of there. And he knows now that Fury, I mean, that Wilder can hurt him. But he knows he can outbox Wilder. But Wilder also knows he can hurt him. And he kind of is, it's like you know his tricks and you've seen his moves. So he knows what he's going to do. He knows that he's going to have to lower the right hand. Um, They're going to use a lot of movement early. But as the fight goes on, Tyson Fury's legs don't move as much. They kind of stay there, and that losing that weight didn't kind of benefit him because in that fight, he was getting tagged in his last fight. He was standing he was standing there with a guy who was going working the body and then coming upstairs. I'm like, this guy was in his wheelhouse. But then then again, you got Wilder, you know, who's, who's uh, not as technically sound as the guy he just fought. So, yeah, he doesn't get inside much, does he? No. So he's just looking for that one punch. And, you know, people the people saw him throw that faint, that fake hook. That It was like, what kind of punch is that? <laughs> that he was throwing in the fight with Ortiz. And he was trying to throw the left. Everybody's like, what, is that a punch? Like, what is he doing? I'm like, I yeah. think he's trying to throw a faint. <laughs> well, and he had that left that. hook. He had that left hook sinker, too. <laughs> Like a sinker curveball yeah, left like up. A broken wing, a broken chicken wing or something. Like, what is that? <laughs> a broken wing. It does, dude. I know. Yeah, exactly. that's like hilarious. a broken chicken wing punch. <laughs> like the broken wing punch. So, yeah. So, they're, they're very happy here on the radio now. I'm like, yep, you are part of Ropado Radio. <laughs> they love it. But nice. yeah, I think uh, the rematch is going to it's, it's it's a fifty fifty fight. But I just don't know if Fury could survive and be on his feet late in the round. He's going to win the early rounds, but when he starts to fatigue and Wilder puts the pressure on and start letting the punches go, one time he gets clipped, he could go down because he barely got clipped on the tip tip of the head and he was on the ground. You know, guys who go down like that off one shot from Wilder, you know, it's like 
And it might not go too well for him. It might be another uh might be another controversial uh decision if he gets back up. But I'm a, I'm gonna stick with Wilder on this one. <laughs> I'm gonna take Wilder. I'm gonna right. try to be smarter, but I'm gonna take Wilder so far. I'm leaning towards Wilder. But uh, I know you got to get out of here and get ready for work, man. So I appreciate the time you took to make this happen, and I'm shocked I made it happen today. <laughs> I'm like, I yeah, I was like, hell oh, yeah, you made it happen. just in time, just in time, dude. Right at the buzzer. All right, buddy, you have a good day, man. Appreciate you calling in too during the day and stuff. All right, y'all want to say bye? Bye, guys. Bye, guys. There we have. All Subscribe right, to that channel. All right, man. Peace. <laughs> yeah, All right, I'm going to shut this puppy down. You guys enjoy the fights. Like I said, there are some fights this weekend. They, they might sneak up on you. I'm out. Enjoy the fights. We'll be back with the AJ and Ruiz prediction segment next week, dude. It will be on and popping. I cannot wait. Anyway, I'm out of here. Peace. Once you become the world champion, I believe that you feel you have the upper hand. So now, when, if, if you fight, let's say you fight for five years of straight survival, of the bullshit, of the whole bag, and when you become the world champion, you're like, you know what? That made it. That will show you it's this. So I'm going to get any, every dollar worth uh, of, of, of what I deserve. 